So, I'm your bookend of the day. I started the morning on this afternoon. Um, again, I'm, I'm Jackie Judd. And joining me in a conversation about reflecting on the day is Kirsten Bibbins Domingo. I'm sure many of you know her. Kirsten is the editor of JAMA and JAMA Network, an epidemiologist and a uh, professor of medicine at UCSF. So what Daniel and I didn't tell Kirsten when we asked her if she would do this with us is it's about the hardest assignment of the day. <laughs> And that's because what we're being asked to do is to analyze, synthesize, step back from five hours of conversation to think about what needs to be thought about further and uh, talked about more tomorrow. So with that, I'll turn it over to you to start. Well, thanks for at least... <laughs> it's all yours. Thanks for at least acknowledging that it's the hardest assignment it of is. the day, even though you didn't tell me ahead of time. Um, uh, well, it, it's been a wonderful morning. Um, I, I have five things that I jotted down as sort of the big themes that I'm going to take away and maybe will be um, uh, useful as we think about uh, what we talk about tomorrow. The, f the first is definitely the image of that green bubble on the network map. Um, and I think whatever the network map was, um, I think that we could probably in many different um, um, areas that we're, we're talking about in communication, health communication, um, that we would probably be in that green bubble. And, uh, and looking at that and acknowledging that, and whether we get there because of uh, the reality of um, information networks, how algorithms amplify some types of information, or whether it's active disinformation, that there's a strategy to, um, to align certain types of messages, we have to do more to be not just in that green bubble. So I think that's the first image that I was left with. The second was actually from the very first video that we saw today um, of the patient who said, what resonates with him are seeing people like him. And I think he talked about the lumberjacks liked him. Um, and I think that that was a lesson I think we heard throughout the day as people either talked about storytelling, talked about um, uh, communities uh, that might have particular issues of, of uh, mistrust or um, uh, trustworthiness um, in the medical profession, but the importance of um, hearing from people like us um, as an important theme. And I do think um, we have to start adopting some more strategies, tactics that work in other environments as we're trying to think through um, our, our own way of, of combating uh, the, the misinformation. I was really um, intrigued by uh, the, the, the um, we talk a lot, and ABIM Foundation has talked a lot about trust and trustworthiness, um, but uh, we, in our small group conversation, one of the people at our table said, you know, she always thought that um, being a doctor, people would trust her and she could convey information more, um, that she wouldn't have to work as hard to build that trust. Mm -hmm. And I think many of us were trained in those environments of like, don't trust me, yet trust me, I'm a doctor, um, that, um, and we shouldn't have to work this hard. And I think it is part, what we're hearing, it is part of our professional responsibility to work hard to both establish that trust, but also to be trustworthy, but also to learn how to convey information in a way um, that, uh, that um, we can engage in these conversations because uh, our patients are hearing it from a variety of different uh, points of view. Um, I think we haven't had as much discussion on disinformation and sort of the organized um, uh, the organized and deliberate uh, use of information along a certain narrative. Um, it does suggest to me, I hope we get to more of that conversation, that we have to be just as organized, um, whether that is in how we're conveying information or how at least we train ourselves professionally uh, to, to work in this environment, to work effectively in this environment. Um, and I, I, think, uh, I think we're going to talk a lot about the different strategies, but I, I think we have to see this more as our own professional responsibility and our own medical institutions 
being deliberate in the organization to, uh, to work effectively in this environment. And then the last reflection I would just say is that um, the big challenge, I think of this as um, an, an editor in a, a journal thinking about new information. I think of it in a pandemic where the science is still emerging, the policies are still emerging. The most challenging thing in this environment is um, is to me uh, sort of being in that environment where we recognize and respect the nuance and the emerging information while being very clear on the things that we know to be false. And I think that that is uh, the tricky environment, particularly in the pandemic now that we're still living in. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the problems of going second is going second. <laughs> 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 You'll hear some overlap between Kirsten's reflections and mine. Uh, I think we ended the day with a more nuanced discussion of those people who are more vulnerable to buying in to misinformation. Rich and I started the morning noting that people who do not get vaccinated, it has so much to do with their political affiliation. But I really um, heard a lot today that made me think we need to think a little more deeply and broadly about that because it's not only political affiliation. First, it's not everyone, and there are multiple reasons. And I go back to the patient video with Rob saying, I want to hear from someone who looks like me. And it's a cliche by now, but what he's really saying is what we all know in this room you have to go to where people are in order for them to listen to you. Um, there's an expression in politics, as you all know, about retail politicking. And the more I heard people speak today, Reed, Lash, Susan, talking about some of the strategies they've been employing to get good information and therefore better health care to, to people, is my thought is whatever we come up with this in this room in the next couple of days, it needs to be really customized, right? It can't be 10,000 foot level, very generic, because there will be no audience for that. Which brings me to Renee's slide, the slide of the day, with the green cluster off to the side representing, I think it was public health officials, right? Yes. My gosh, it, it struck all of us. I think mm -hmm. we're probably half a dozen now of us have mentioned it. And, uh, you know, it makes me really wonder and worry a bit about how public health moves into this space. It has taken such a beating mm -hmm. in the past four or five years, uh, and particularly during the epidemic. There's, there is a shortage of people working in the field. It's underfunded. It's dis jointed, et cetera. So how do we get the public health community, um, and I know some of you are in the room, so you're really, really important to this conversation, but it's typically such an important voice, and I'm struggling a little bit at this moment with figuring out how to get that green cluster mm -hmm. more in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, thank you. I, I totally agree. In hearing you and your reflections, it does strike me that, that we're going to have to be operating on um, the level of giving, uh, of, of thinking through our individual um, interactions with patients and make, knowing that both of us are working in an environment of this type of information environment, understanding how to convey information, how to uh, build trust, how to um, uh, uh, combat misinformation. But then we're going to also, and, and we have to as a profession, make sure that in our training, uh, we, we are training to give uh, physicians tools to do that. But as an organization, as organizations within um, the large medical landscape, we probably are also going to have to be a little bit more deliberate um, mm -hmm. because, uh, because, um, uh, because some of these are very organized strategies, right? Yes. And so I think, yes. I think we, we're going to have to have conversations at both of those Absolutely. levels. Absolutely. And at, at the, what I would call the micro level, one of the things I did hear about today, again, Rich and I started the the morning talking about 
it just doesn't feel like there are many safe places in which you can have a reasonable conversation with people about facts and about misinformation with the goal of getting them to better health care. But um, I thought that when everybody uh, came back in the room from our first breakout sessions, uh, the commonality of some of the comments were, that were said about was um, the care of the messenger, that there was no other agenda to try to persuade, in most cases, people to be vaccinated. There was no other agenda from the messenger than that person's better health. Mm -hmm. And it was done in, um, in a way that, that could be models for breaking through, I think for changing minds, for minimizing misinformation. Um, it just felt like there were some kernels in there that we could grab and try to populate, again, at a micro level, but it's there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. In some ways, um, the pandemic has brought this all to the fore and, and amplified it. Um, in some ways, these are the conversations we, we always have to be having with our patients. Yes. But, my patients don't always take the medicines that I would like them to. I have to have the conversation about um, why they should stop smoking. Um, we have to figure out how we meet patients where they are. Um, I think there is there is an element of the pandemic. You started out by saying that that these this morning saying these are issues of. Um, you know, we oftentimes come away that these are issues of morality. I do think mm -hmm. we probably are as guilty of, of that, of mm -hmm. making uh, some of these that are, they're, they're scientific facts, and then they're the decisions that we are, are asking our patients to, to make. Um, I, I think we have to have those conversations that, um, that uh, are about um, conveying the scientific fact, but then allowing the discussions of, of, of why people are making the decisions and how we can convey um, the importance um, of making the decisions that would be best for their health. But, um, but I think we probably, in the pandemic, a lot has been ratcheted up on all sides of, of um, the, the, the morality of one decision or another. Yes, yes. Uh, in the few minutes that we have remaining, I want to think about where we should go in the next couple of days. And without my sounding like a scold, uh, I, would, I would say that I've heard some of you in this room talk about how the healthcare system really wasn't meant to be nimble. Mm -hmm. And I think nimble is something that we need to think about because the problems we're discussing here are so urgent and so big and so important that being slow and deliberate, which is a more comfortable place for all of you, and I, under I understand that, but uh, I think nimble is an important concept for us to think about in the next couple of days. The other thing I would say is um, I'm really pleased throughout the, the morning and afternoon to hear um, about people talking about the importance of coalition building. Mm -hmm. Because for each organization to have a single voice, it's crying in the wilderness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so coalition building to me, all of you in this room are allies that we need to think about moving forward together and not always individually. Yeah, that resonates for for me so much. I mean, a lot. It's been said before that a lot of the communication, the CDC and other types of communication, is very rooted in we only communicate when we're a hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. And I think the opportunity to, for us uh, and our profession is to um, is to be a little bit more nimble, but in rooted in th the things that we know. And um, I think the best communicators who are nimble um, don't uh, don't over assert um, sort of where the science is, but acknowledge that the the best available evidence right now suggests this is where we should be, and acknowledges also the limitations. I think that freedom once you become comfortable conveying in that style, uh, allows you to be more nimble and to, to actually to, to, to give information more freely. And I think that we have to be a little bit uh, better in those spaces. Yeah. Daniel admonished me that when I come up here, I can't be an inquisitor. I'm, I wasn't brought up here to ask the questions. I was brought up here to try to answer some, but I'm going to ask you one. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you, you mentioned in your earlier comments, you know, potential for some material that could make its way to JAMA. And I'm just wondering with your communications hat on through JAMA, what avenues are there for pieces to be written so that a larger audience beyond this room can hear about it? Yeah, um, so, uh, well, we're still thinking this through. You're trying to get your article in JAMA, aren't you? <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> I won't speak for Daniel. I mean, I do have to say that one of the conversations we had earlier, the House of Medicine uh, um, discussion that took place, at, I think, at the end of June, one of the things that I, I think was really intriguing that came out of that is, um, you know, as journals who, um, who want to be a place for emerging science, who want to be a place for having uh, the discussions where we, we, we don't know the best answer forward, mm -hmm. to also be a place that said, you know, to, to uh, acknowledge and recognize we're in an environment of increasing misinformation and disinformation, and that there's some of the things as it relates to pandemic communication that we very clearly do know right now um, of the things that don't work and that um, there should be a role uh, potentially in, in a certain type of environment for communicating that more clearly. Mm -hmm. I do think there, um, the, the strategies for how we as a profession think through, um, think through environments and communication in these environments, what we need to train to, um, how, how we need, um, uh, what types of skills a, 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 a physician needs to have in these types of environments is something we, we do want to be part of those uh, of those discussions. Um, and then I, I do think um, I, I do think it is it is an interesting and challenging one to think through in places where the science continues to emerge. Um, what are the roles of saying this clearly violates the standard? Yes. And I don't think we're quite there. Um, I, I think that there's some when they look at the professional societies and um, you know, the boards are, um, would say they haven't gone far enough, and some they would say they've gone too far. And I do think these are the conversations we're yes. going to all have to continue to have, and I, I think we want to have those those publicly because it, it is the challenge to our profession now in, in thinking about what this yes. means.